Excuse me. Yes? Pretty gloomy clinic. It could do with a bit of human warmth. It used to be the fortress of the Dukes of Valsambor, the ancient rampart standing against invasions from the east. The inhabitants of Valsambor took refuge here and often escaped the besiegers through mysterious secret passages. When did it become a clinic? That was 20 years ago, thanks to Dr. Zamiatine. I'm looking for Dr. Zamiatine. He's in his office. You'll find it in the small corridor back there, the first door on your left. I would like to leave this clinic. Would you mind telling me where the exit is, please? Well, usually I'd have told you to go over to the other side of the courtyard to take the funicular that goes down to Valsambor. But it seems Dr. Efimova has shut off the entire clinic for security reasons. The funicular has been stopped until further orders. I see. Thank you for all that information. I'll be going now. Maybe you should head on back to your room and wait until they say the funicular is fixed and back in service? I'll think about it. Goodbye. Why not have a seat for a bit in the waiting room? It's just near the offices, right behind reception. The funicular is out of service until further notice. Ah, hello, Miss Walker. How very delightful to see you up and about. Even if I really have to admit that I'm a bit surprised, our dear Dr. Olga painted a far darker picture of your current state of health. I don't want to say anything bad about someone you seem to appreciate, Dr. Zamiatine, but quite frankly, Dr. Efimova worries me. Ah, and why is that? She and her associate, Dr. Mangling, put me through a real interrogation. They're also keeping Kirk, the young Yukul, prisoner, attached to his bed. Not to mention the psychological grip she seems to have on everybody here. Listen to me, Miss Walker. I know that waking up after a prolonged period in a coma is difficult. In such a context, anxiety attacks are very normal. But please, do not project it onto Dr. Olga. I'm not getting any younger, you know, and running this clinic is a very heavy burden. The last few years, Olga has shown she is capable of assisting me. I have every faith in her. But... The subject is closed, Miss Walker. Please tell me about that pendant you have around your neck. I must admit I noticed it as soon as you walked in. It's... a souvenir. Of a good memory, or a bad one? Both at once, really. Of course. Just like with all memories, right? At any rate, what's currently important for you is to avoid being too haunted. Dr. Zamiatine, I promised Kirk I'd go to the craftsman in Valsambor and bring back his mechanical prosthesis. The poor boy has been waiting for it for ages, so I'd like to try to speed up the process. Would you tell me how to get there? Now there's a truly noble initiative, Miss Walker. I asked my clockmaker friend Simon Steiner to manufacture the young Yukol's mechanical prosthetic leg. He's a capable craftsman and ingenious. You'll find him in his workshop near the Valsambor port. I imagine he must almost be finished with his work by now. 
He makes amazing things. You'll see. Can you authorize my release so that I can see Dr. Steiner? Unfortunately, I've been told that the clinic is in lockdown. You will have to ask Dr. Olga, Miss Walker. She signed the current order to lock our establishment down. She's in charge of giving out the passes. This book should answer any of the questions you may have about our Yukol's friends. Farewell and bon voyage, Miss Walker. Why did the Yukols ask you to heal Kirk? On each of their migrations, the Yukol shamans and I have exchanged medical knowledge. Their trance therapy and materia medica have provided astounding results for my patients affected by psychological afflictions. In exchange, I do what I can to take care of those injured that they can't heal using their traditional medicine. Like, uh, that poor boy who lost his leg. How many ostrich migrations have you seen? This is the third one. I'm lucky to have seen so many of them. It's a rare spectacle. Believe me, the great herd of ostriches accompanied by the Yukols, doomed to blindly follow their animals wherever they happen to roam. And they don't care about countries, wars, and borders. You seem to like the Yukols, Dr. Zamiatine. They are a fascinating people, you know, and such astonishing medicine infused with shamanism. Without which, no doubt, you would have never arrived in this clinic alive, Miss Walker. I get the impression that the Yukos aren't much liked around here. Indeed. It would seem that most of the inhabitants of Valsambor are now quite hostile towards them. This wasn't the case a while back, you know. When I was young, the migration of the snow ostriches was an event widely welcomed with open arms in Valsambor. Why the change in attitude? Our region was actually somewhat devastated 20 years ago. Dramatic events changed the way people viewed the world. The people turned inward on themselves. They're less welcoming. And the fact that the Yukols have been stuck here, next to Lake Valsambor for several weeks, hasn't helped. It's really necessary for me to ask Olga's permission to leave? You're the director of this clinic, after all. Olga is my right-hand woman. I can't keep her uninvolved in current matters, Miss Walker. She is also currently your doctor. You should really talk with her about it. She isn't as evil as you seem to believe. You'll find her in her office, most probably. The American is awake. You must hurry, Colonel. Hmm. How is she doing? Fine, apparently. She is docile for the moment. This may not last too much longer, I'm afraid. And what about the tribe of nomads? Just like the past two years, Leg Valsambor hasn't frozen over. So the herd can't cross the ice. They're stuck here. And also, their young guide is still in our control. If everything goes as planned, soon the Yukols will have no choice but to go back home. Especially as I have a plan to speed things up. Fine. There's also the American detective, Colonel. He should be arriving soon. Let him meet with Miss Walker if that's what he wants to do. No point alarming him just yet. When all is said and done, we're the ones who are handling the young woman's case. No American is going to come here and tell us what to do. Where did-
where'd she go? I'm here to see you too. Kate Walker, it really is you! What a coincidence. I've been looking for you for weeks. Uh, Mr. Canton, I presume? Ah, I see that my reputation perceives me. Miss Efimova must have told you I was coming. No, I just now learned of your existence, Mr. Canton. A while ago, my employer in New York informed me that he was going to stick a detective on my back. I don't like to boast, but I'm the best detective on the East Coast. Never a problem with me. I've been asked to bring you back home safe and sound, Miss Walker. I should be in Balsamore in a few hours. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Canton. I'm sure that finding me hasn't been easy. Oh my god. You have no idea. I'm afraid this might upset you, but I'm not planning on going back to the United States for the moment, Mr. Canton. To be honest, you don't really have a choice. The U.S. Justice Department is looking for you, and I even have an international arrest warrant for you, Miss Walker. Who'd have thought? The Feds are looking for me? But what's the charge? I've done nothing wrong. Embezzlement! Apparently you took off with a contract for the sale of the clockwork toy factory in Vorlberg. And you took advantage of the seller's senility. You're even suspected of being responsible for the death of one of them. A Mr. Hans Vorlberg, the last heir authorized to sign contracts with the company you represented. That's not negligible. You know, Miss Walker. This is completely ridiculous. And as far as I know, you aren't authorized to represent the Justice Department in this country. You're just a detective. So you'll have to put up with it, Mr. Canton. I'm not going back to New York with you. So leave me alone. Wait, Miss Walker. Please be reasonable. Goodbye, Mr. Canton.
charming. Hurry up. Yes, Dr. Eltimova. I'm doing whatever I can. Get this damn tap open in the end, you'll see. Ah. Ah. That's it. Well, that should convince the Yukul scum to strike camp and go back where she came from. Come on, Helmet. Let's not hang about here. Yes, of course, Dr. Ethanol. Hydrochloric acid. This thing is stuck.
Miss Catwalk, help please! Quickly, or all ostrich is lost! Help please, Miss Catwalk! Miss Catwalk must do something! Quick! Help please, Miss Catwalk! Miss Ketwalk, send the new tuk 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 tuk. Many near Puru. My God, what happened to that poor ostrich? Ostriches want drink very bad water, tuk. When ostrich is thirsty, ostrich is thirsty. And ostrich is not smart smart, Miss Ketwalk. She lako lako, tuk. Head hard like hard rock. Try to hold them back as long as possible. There must be a way to filter the river water. Ungeremuk, but Miss Ketwalk, go quickly. Miss Ketwalker. Uh, hello, ma'am. Da! <laughs> you remember me, Miss Ketwalker. Me, Ayahuasca. Great Yukul Shaman. Me go there and find you somewhere there in the world of the spirits. So you're the one I owe my life to, Madame Ayahuasca. It's you who cared for me before taking me to the doctors in the Valsambor Clinic. Nick, I don't know how I can ever thank you. Tuk tuk tuger. Miss Kate Walker go clean river water right up there. Since she traveled long time in magic world, spirits now her friends. They will show her the right path. I... very well. If you say that the spirits are going to give me a hand, I... I'll try to do that. Ladies and gentlemen of the spirit world, if you want to show me the way, now's the time. Just had to ask, I guess. This gauge is obviously for measuring the water flow from the dam. Bayerdla, Miss Ketwalk. Thanks you and spirits. Ostriches saved. 
Be careful all the same, Mr. Barut. The dam filtering the water may not hold very long. Sa! You girls leave here fast to make sure Ostrich is safe. But not possible without Kirk. Him our guide. I just came from the clinic. Kirk and I shared a room. Sa! How going, Kirk? He's doing fine, though. I mean, for the moment. But he's stuck up there without the prosthesis, you see. No, Kirk. Yukos cannot leave here. So ostriches won't continue journey without Yukos. Can't keep ostriches here very long. Ostriches cross Lake Valsambor alone. And then eaten by lake spirits. Took. The ostriches crossing the lake. So that has to be a part of the migration? Tuk Tuk, Baranur on other side of lake, is path of sacred plains. Ostriches lay eggs in hot sand on sacred plains. But lake, not anymore frozen, so not be able cross. Listen, Mr. Barut, do your best to calm your ostriches while I go to Valsumbor. I promise Kirk to go get his prosthesis and bring it back to him. Bartla, Bartla, Tuk, Miss Ketwalk, you friend of Yukol's. I'm going to speak with the shaman now. Ayahuasca will be very happy. See Miss Ketwalk. She go with you and around you a lot in world of spirits, so they free you. You not die because of her. Miss Ketwalk, go and see Shaman Ayahuasca to speak about Kirk. What a strange sculpture. Looks like a kind of octopus or squid. Sinister. Walker, you have good news? To be honest, nothing great. Kirk, your young guide, is in the hands of Olga Efimova. That woman has the director of the clinic, Dr. Zamiatine, under her thumb. She also seems to be in tight with a shady soldier. These people hate you, Ayahuasca. They can't stand your way of life. They're the ones who poisoned your ostrich's water. I think they're also holding up Kirk's prosthesis to keep him in the clinic and stop you from continuing your migration. People not like Yukels now. Yukels out of date. Tuk tuk. If Yukels without guide, not able to continue great voyage, return to north and never leave again, and then ostriches die. Well, hold on. 
We're not at that stage yet. I promised Kirk I'd go to Valsambor to bring back his mechanical leg. Oh, magic leg not only problem for you girls. <laughs> What's the other problem? Ayahuasca sees bad spirits everywhere on long road for you calls. Now many very, very bad spirits on lake and also after. Baranor. Baranor very dangerous. Bad luck. Bad luck everywhere. Ayahuasca very, very scared. There may be another way to cross the lake, instead of waiting for it to freeze. I'll find out when I visit Valsambor. Why Miss Kate Walker decide to do all this for us? You're treated like pariahs. I'm disgusted by how everybody sees you here. Miss Kate Walker and you girls are friends. So Miss Kate Walker decide accompany you girls on great journey? We'll see. First I have to go to Valsambor. But like you, I seem to be a prisoner in this camp. You girls not have right to go to Valsambor now. Miss Kate Walker like them. Now she must find pass so that she able to leave here. Strange the lake taking so long to freeze. This must be a consequence of global warming. Bad spirits at bottom of lake make water very hot. Really nasty bad spirits everywhere now. <laughs> Where can I find a pass so I can leave the camp? Before, Yukuls could make use of pass machine and cabin at camp exit. But authorities decide break it in small pieces so now we cannot use. Miss Kate Walker should ask client tourists in Valsambor. I was told about everything your tribe did for me when you found me. Thank you so much. Miss Kate Walker cured. That's what counts. Job of ayahuasca. <laughs> I'm going to try to find the pass that you told me about. Miss Kate Walker, go quickly. What a funny smell. A hide. Must be for making clothing. to enter the city? How did you get in? I can go inside this yurt. What a pretty pattern. If only I had the time to take a little nap.
So that's the famous lake that won't freeze anymore. for the municipal employees. Stop! You may not pass. Uh, may I ask why not? Miss, as the inopportune loitering of the Yukon nomads in town was proving to be disturbing the tranquility of the inhabitants, <gasps> Mayor Bulakin has ordered access to Valsambor to henceforth be restricted to those presenting a duly stamped pass, which confers the authorization to access said town. Sir, I really don't think I represent a danger for Valsambur. Plus, I'm not a yukul. My dear young lady, your physiognomy is not sufficient. Only presentation of said municipal pass shall be acceptable. Listen, I really need to get into town. Without a pass, you shall not pass. Do I really need a pass? Indispensable, so cease arguing and keep moving. Do I really need a pass? Indispensable, so cease arguing and keep moving. A checkpoint for the municipal employees. Must clean cabin so not get fine. Given the living conditions here, I can understand why the policeman's so nice. A stamp? Looks like something's missing, though. There's a shape ingrained in the leather. The Yukal craftsmen must make these statuettes by the dozen. Sir, excuse me. Hello, miss. You're not actually from here. I can hear it. What on earth is a young American doing in our beautiful land? Business? Or perhaps tourism? Oh, it's a long story, believe me. I see. In any event, you must try and visit our town. 
You know, Valsambor is very charming this season. And may I suggest you drop by my tavern? It's the best restaurant in town. Well, I'd love to, but unfortunately I learned that now I need a pass to get into Valsambor. I'm looking for someone who can help me get one. Ah, oh, yes, that's true. That's a pain it is. But you're actually in luck. I may be able to do something for you. This is my wife's pass. She's not well, so she couldn't come with me. The document is perfectly valid, except she forgot to get it stamped at the town hall. And that's a problem? I'm afraid so. Without the stamp, the document is worthless. Not that long ago, you just needed to get it officially stamped at the police checkpoint, over there at the camp gate. But there hasn't been anybody there since the town decided to come down hard on the U-Calls. So this pass is useless? Not necessarily. You need to add a stamp that looks like the official Valsambor seal. The police aren't that sharp-sighted around here, I have to admit. Anyway, I didn't say a word. Good luck, miss. And don't forget to drop by my tavern when you're in Valsambor. <laughs>